Like I said, any of you serious mining guys for BC, if you want to really do some serious exploring, maybe find some really good gold. Highly recommend Bridge River Country for prospecting, guys. Nobody comes here. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna come down the mountain now into Gold Bridge. This is the... There's a cool video, like I said, of this trucker. He's driving this big rig down these switchbacks. It's really intense too, how he, uh, how he does it, right? He's gonna go super wide because it's an 18 wheeler. So this whole Squamish Lillowood area, you just get used to driving with switchbacks. It's just the reality. British Columbia's leading gold camp. Toils and obscurity. Perfect for my channel though. There's a Bank of Toronto apparently here and Bank of Montreal. This is the first in the chain. This is where the Bridge River Power Complex begins and then it ends in Lillooet. Alrighty guys, so here we are, Le Joie or Le Joie, Le Joie, somebody's French can probably get in trouble for that. But here we are guys. We've been doing the Bridge River Power Complex this trip. This is the first part. It's a three tiered system. Lillooet being the low portion of it. Lillooet is where it ends. Seton Dam is the last dam in the chain. So it starts here in the mountains guys. South Chilcotin Mountains, just over that mountain there. All the snow, all these glaciers you see here, this all melts and fills this lake up. This is downtown lake. They call it downtown lake. So this is just a storage dam guys. So this literally, they just, this concrete wall, you can see the sloped concrete wall, they built it across, dams this, and then this fills up, right? It's just a reservoir that fills up. When they need to, BC Hydro can drain this dam into Carpenter Lake to correct the level of Carpenter Lake. There's a power generation station here where they generate power. The power is getting generated for Braylorn, Gold Bridge, all around here. They initially needed the power for the Braylorn mines. So in the 30s there, they started building all this stuff. These projects have been going on in this region since the 30s and 40s, guys. And it's just been a gradual like first phase, second phase, third phase, fourth phase. And then BC Hydro is constantly doing maintenance. Need to care for the concrete, uh, maintenance the gates, electricians, right? Lots of work out here, guys, for the hydro power complex provides about six to eight percent of bc's total power output this this power generation complex squamish lillooet so the Le Joie dam is the first one in the chain it's the highest one up then goes to carpenter lake carpenter lake is a diversion dam basically you're converting the bridge river into a lake and then that water from the bridge river is diverted down the side of a mountain through penstocks Powerhouse number one has four. Powerhouse number two has two penstocks each. And these penstocks go literally all the way down Mission Mountain, guys. So from the top of Carpenter Lake, like where the dam is there, the penstocks go down all the way to Shalith and Seton Portage. And then there's powerhouses there. Then once the power has gone from Carpenter Lake down through the diversion tunnels, penstocks, into the Seton powerhouse. It comes out of the Seton and Shalith powerhouses into Seton Lake. And then Seton Lake is part of the Douglas Road, kind of the original caribou, the original gold rush route to Lillooet, right? Because Lillooet was first, guys. Lillooet was first before Clinton and Cash Creek. This, this all came after. Lillooet is kind of the, the mile zero, guys, right? That's why they say mile zero. But Seton Lake was used back in the gold days as a canoe route because Seton Lake is a natural lake. Now, they built the Seton Dam just outside Lillooet, and the Seton Dam raised Seton Lake about 10 feet. Seton Lake is naturally very deep because it's an alpine lake. Alpine lakes typically tend to be deep just because they're valleys that have been filled in by water. So Seton Lake has the dam on the one side, the Seton Dam, and then this is where it gets really cool. There's the Seton Canal. So the Seton Canal goes from the Seton Dam, carries water over Cayuse Creek, which is a gold creek, which had its own gold rush, the Golden Cache, Arthur Knoll. We'll talk all about that at another time. This canal goes from the dam, transports water, kind of like a flume, 
but it's a canal basically, over Cayuche Creek. And then it comes down into the powerhouse in Lillooet. And that powerhouse is in Lillooet. And then that provides power for Lillooet. Right? And there's Anderson Lake on one side. And then there's Seton Lake on the other. And these are the lakes that they were using. So when you were coming up through the gold fields to Lillooet on the Douglas Road, you'd start in Harrison Hot Springs. You'd go up Harrison Lake, up the Lillooet River, into Pemberton. You'd go up through Darcy there. Then you'd hit Anderson Lake, and then you'd canoe, right? Canoe across Anderson Lake, get the Seton Portage, do the portage, get back in the boat, canoe across Seton Lake, and that would take you into Lillooet. And then you're in Lillooet, and then you can start your quest for the gold fields because the Fraser Canyon was really inaccessible for a long time, guys. The Royal Engineers had to build the road. It was hard, guys, and the Caribou Gold Rush instigated that. If before the Caribou Gold Rush, it was a lot harder to get anywhere through the Fraser, but the Lakes Route, the Douglas Road, as they called it after Governor Douglas, that's the route. So you've got three dams and four powerhouses doing the work here. This is the Bridge River Power Project, guys. It's been built in various different steps. Gold, right? It necessitates lots of things. Like Braylorn had electricity before some places in Ontario and other parts of the province, right? Especially out in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta. They didn't have electricity out there for a long time, guys. Huge part for this region. It kind of is like the main show here. It's quite an undertaking for maintenance. Like there's a pretty regimented maintenance schedule. We'll look a little bit more when we get back to the end of Carpenter Lake. We'll take a look at the diversion dam again. Show you guys a little bit more about the diversion dam. This is the Le Joie Dam. You can see that beautiful colored water. There's ice on the lake, guys. It's frozen. Sun's out though, it's nice and warm, probably about eight degrees, eight, 10 degrees, but that's warm enough for me. We're gonna start our journey back now along Carpenter Lake. And then we're gonna be in that canyon again along the Bridge River. Lillooet, Braylord, and Gold Bridge. Alrighty guys, here we are, Gold Bridge, just on the outskirts of town now. Welcome to our home. Braylorn, Gold Bridge, Gun, Tyutton, and Marshall Lakes. So the Hailmore Heritage Site, guys, prospector, huge fixture in this region of BC. He saw the vision, guys, for the claims and the mines and everything. And so he had a cabin, the Hailmore Heritage Site. So this is tourism info, booth, gold panning, local artisans. It's just down here, basically. There's a museum. They'll show you how to gold pan. History of Gold Bridge, basically, right? A little all that kind of stuff. Everybody knew him, everybody loved him. Just one of those old school prospectors. He was quite the character from what I heard about it. So here we go, the Bridge River, guys. This is the Bridge River, the mighty Bridge River. Gun Lake, Pemberton, Lillooet. We're here, right? Gun Lake, guys, there are a lot of cottages here. So we're like right here, Gold Bridge. We went up to Braylorn. This is the Hurley. That's the Hurley, guys. So Seton and Shalith, right? Seton Portage, Shalith. The penstocks are here, guys. This is where all the penstocks are. And then this is the canyon back to Lillooet, right? Up here. Power generation plays a large role in the history of the area, with Joffrey Downton first noting the potential in 1912. The series of three dams, four powerhouses, and a canal to harness the power of the Bridge River by diverting it through a mountainside to the separate drainage basin of Seton Lake. The system generates 492 megawatts, or 6 to 8% of British Columbia's electrical supply. The first of these dams was started in 1927 when work boring a tunnel through Mission Ridge was started. The tunnel was completed in 1931. Construction was delayed due to the depression and work on the powerhouse did not begin until 1946. The first generator was installed in 1948 and three more generators added by 1954. Completed in 1960, the Terzaghi Dam impounds 23,725 cubic meters of water in Carpenter Lake Reservoir to generate power. Downton Lake Reservoir, upper river of Carpenter Lake, is created by the Lejoie Dam, an earth fill structure 87 meters high. Was completed in 1955 and impounds 15,130 cubic meters of water. The reservoir generates 170 gigawatt hours per year. The Seton Lake Reservoir was also completed around this time and directs water from the Seton River to the Seton Powerhouse on the Fraser River. Although Seton Lake is natural in origin, it was raised to maximize power generation. In 1927, guys, was when they started construction here. That's early. And in the summertime, guys, I was telling you about the Hailmore site, pan for gold, do a gold panning tour. It's a whole thing. <laughs>
Alrighty guys, so here we are. Got the bridge, Gun Creek is uh, Gold Creek guys. They pulled gold off of here. Some good gold came out of here. Let's see if we can get down. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, so they just would have pulled gold out of here guys. See the, the ground here. Gun Creek, still snow about in the mountains. Snow all over there too. The Bailey Bridge. One of the gold creeks of note in the Bridge River District. Tyoten Creek as well. That's another creek of note. A lot of promising, very kind of untapped prospecting territory. Like I said, any of you serious mining guys for BC, if you want to really do some serious exploring, maybe find some really good gold. Highly recommend Bridge River Country for prospecting, guys. Nobody comes here. You got, you got kind of got your pick here, guys. I'm sure there's claim stage. You just check the mineral claims titles. But yeah, pretty good. It's your Alrighty guys, so Carpenter Lake, we're just about coming to the end here of Carpenter Lake. It's really low right now guys, it's weird. It's a reservoir, it's seen, I assume everything's fine. It doesn't, I'm not I'm no expert on reservoir levels and dams, but it just looks low guys. And you can see where the old forest was, cause this is the Bridge River. It's so low now that we can actually see the, the water course of the Bridge River, like the meandering river through the valley. And it's just starting to like become a lake again. But you can see like, look at the levels. Look how high up it would have been. And this is the road for anybody's wondering if you want to do the drive from Lillooet to Braylorn. This is the road. We've had a little bit of rock on the road. You just kind of swerve out of the way. Some pitting. Nothing too bad though, guys. Honestly, the worst part is at the very beginning or like when you're just leaving Lillooet. This is about par for most of Carpenter Lake. This section here, pretty good. Two wheel drive. I've had the truck and two wheel drive all day. I haven't had any issues. Haven't had to go into four by four yet. Maybe that might that might be a different story in the wet. Yeah, Carpenter Lake, guys. It's weird. See the old trees and stuff from the Bridge River Valley? Like this is the Bridge River Country, basically, is what they call it. Alrighty guys, the Terzaghi Dam. We've driven all of Carpenter Lake. We drove from here in the morning to Gold Bridge. And then we explored Braylord and now we're heading back through the Bridge River Country again. Getting the other the other angle, right? The other viewpoint. But uh, Carl Terzaghi, guys, soil, the soil, he was kind of the founder of like modern soil mechanic theory, basically. And he helped design this dam. So that's why it's named Terzaghi. At some point, I'm gonna come back and do, uh, cause it's, you need, you need, you need a lot of time to do all of this. I'm gonna come back and do Seton and Shallow, do Mission Mountain Road. But that's the power line. It follows the power lines back to Pemberton, right? Uh, cause Pemberton's getting power from here too. So but this is, yeah, 6% of BC Hydro's entire energy output is comes from here and i was just thinking about it too 1927 guys this is almost 100 years old like this was first conceived and engine started engineering started right 1927 construction and then it's so this this whole thing's been going on for about almost 100 years right so it's that's why i said about the bridge river like it's surprising how little is talked about with this and you see the the that's how they can divert water they don't need to use the spillway right now and if they need to let the reservoir out, they can use those gates to uh, divert the water into the Bridge River, or they're using it for the tunnels. They need they need the reservoir to be high so they can fill the penstocks and send water down uh, down Mission Mountain to Seton Portage and Chalith. 
but yeah, you can see like, yeah, it's like right in the rock. Concrete's poured right into the rock. Yeah, that's earth fill, earth fill dam. Fiber is a service here, guys, too. You need to make a phone call, come out here. <laughs> like full five bars of service. That's the, you, don't, you don't get that in many parts of BC. Yeah. It's 120 kilometers long, the Brith River. It's a tributary of the Fraser River. And guys initially were, they were at the mouth of the Bridge River and the confluence of the Fraser and they're panning for gold and they were finding really coarse gold right around the Bridge River area. And it was coarser than the stuff they were getting in the Fraser. So then they were like, they were like, oh, well maybe we should go up here. And they started prospecting up here. And it was like, wow. They were like, started finding a whole bunch of like really coarse, good plaster gold. So then, they continued. It was mainly Chinese, though. Chinese and Italians that were doing it at the time. And then, like, and... But they got run out by the, uh... The Indian chief, who was, like, basically, like... This is my... This is my area. Get out of here. guys so coming to a close here bridge river Whew. wow man all i'm gonna say guys is it's not too often that places like this are kind of left to just be themselves braylorn gold bridge carpenter lake bridge river valley bridge river itself come check it out guys seriously come out here check it out like i said you gold prospectors Definitely worth your time, man, to come out here, do some prospecting, you know. Lots of good choices here for claims and prospecting, placer and hard rock, right? We got both going on here. Sad that it's not talked about more, frankly. I wish that it seems like it should be a bigger deal than it is. I don't know. It's like there's a lot like this. Everything in this Bridge River is very intentional. Like there's nothing that's like, you know, haphazard about it or anything like that. So I think uh, I think it's definitely warrants more you know more videos and we're gonna do a lot more content on it so make sure you guys like and subscribe to the video leave a comment hit the bell icon to get notified and sasquatch prospector out oh.